all NC commands, whether they're M codes, G codes, I's, Q's, K's, whatever, fall into one of two categories. They're either modal or non-modal, or you might call them one-shot commands. A modal command is a command where you set it in the machine and it stays set until you change it. For example, if you put in a G01 for linear motion, that's all the machine's going to do until it changes. This, every X, Y, or Z move that you make is going to be in a linear, a linear motion at a specific feed rate. And it'll stay that way until you change it. A one-shot command might be like a, a G28, which is a command which tells the machine to go home. It, it sends it to the machine reference point. Once you program that in, it goes there, and then it forgot that it ever did it. So this is going to be important because when we first start running our machines, one of the things we want to make sure is that it's not going to do anything crazy that we don't want it to do. So the first line of any program, of any NC program, and it's generally a good idea to make it the first line after any tool change, is to create what we call a, a safe start line. And in the safe start line, what we do is we set all those modal commands that we want the machine, we want to be active, and we make sure that there aren't any codes active that we don't want. Let me give you an example. Uh, let's say for some reason we had been maybe doing some machining on this side or this plane of the part. Instead of our tool coming in this way, uh, for some reason we were using this plane. Well, if we start off with our uh, program to start going around here and we haven't reset that plane, it's going to come in and do the wrong stuff in the wrong area, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so we, in our safe start block, we're going to set the plane, we're going to set the rapid travel mode or whatever. We're going to send, set all these things so that they're safe for the next move we're going to make so that everything, we can predict everything that's going to happen. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the safe start line, which this will be the first line of our G-code program. And we'll pop one up on the screen here. The first line of any program, the safe start uh, line program, usually starts with an O, the letter O, followed by some number. Uh, the letter O followed by a number assigns a program number to that program. Uh, so in the book on page 56, where our program starts with an O17, that means our program number is going to be O17, or excuse me, going to be 17. The next line is always uh, for me, the way I always start, I put in GOO, rapid travel, because whenever I first start a machine, I'm usually off in some safe point. No matter where I, what I want to do, I want to do it in a rapid move, just so I can get down to the work area and work to the part. The next command I put in, in this particular case, is a G17. A G17 tells the machine that we're actually going to work on this plane, on this face. So I'm telling it, we're going to be working here, not here, not here, but we're going to be working on this face. So that's, that's the G17 or the plane call out. The next step is usually I program a G40. Now a G40 is cancels cutter compensation. So if we were using cutter compensation, say if we're using a half inch tool and we programmed in a half inch of cutter compensation, which we might talk about later. We don't use it in this program, so we may not go into it. But when you're using cutter compensation, if you don't turn it on, next time you put in a tool, it could be a different size tool, and it's going to try and offset it by an amount or a value different than the actual size of the tool. So that would, that would cut off the cutter compensation. And the last thing, the last code I put in is a G80, which cancels any can cycles that I might have had running. This isn't typically necessary because a GOO usually cancels a G80 anyway. But to me, it just, it's habit from the old days, I guess. I just want to be safe, want to do it in a way that I can predict what's going to happen. Because uh, what can happen if you don't cancel the can cycle, let's say you didn't have a GOO and you didn't have a G80 to cancel a can cycle. So you, 
you call the machine, you go and say, okay, go to XYZ, it goes to that location. The first thing it, do, it does when it gets there, that's going to start doing whatever that last can cycle was. If that's uh, drilling a hole or tapping a hole, that's what it's going to do. So part of my startup block is always to uh, cancel any can cycles that might have been active at that particular time. Make sense?